Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Big Ideas on the Go. I'm uh, excited to have with me uh, on today's uh, episode, Mark Tamalo, who's the SVP and Chief um, uh, Security Officer for Victoria's Secret. Uh, Mark, thank you very much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. So, Mark, you know, we're going to talk a little bit about kind of your experiences in terms of kind of your current role and kind of security and where you see uh, um, security going. So maybe just to kind of get started a little bit, um, maybe talk a little bit about kind of your journey. Um, you know, how'd you get into this uh, role? How'd you get to Victoria's Secret? I know that you started off in Cincinnati before going to Columbus. I know that you're a Skyline chili eater. So maybe talk us, talk us through the journey. That, that's great. So uh, I've been working in cybersecurity, security uh, for almost 24 years in various roles. So from a founder um, and an entrepreneur to, you know, running large security functions for Fortune 10, Fortune 20, Fortune 500. I've, I've worked for venture capital and ran some of their portfolio companies and um, in, in all sorts of industries, right? Retail, government, intelligence, uh, technology companies and, and gaming industry. So I, I, really, I, I really value um, my journey to Victoria's Secret. Columbus is rich with really good retailers, a lot of credit card uh, security, a lot of security professionals. So I, I'm I'm honored to be part of uh, kind of this Columbus region of security uh, professionals. Yeah, you guys need to have your own your own chili though. You can't be depending on Cincinnati's chili. <laughs> um, so so look, you know, I'd love to hear a little bit. So kind of in that in in your kind of tenure or uh, in your maturity when when you had longer probably free flowing hair, uh, I'd love to I'd love to know a little bit more about how you've seen the industry evolve. You know, whether it's um, from on-premise to the cloud, whether it's around vulnerability or some of the new innovations around data security. Tell me a little bit about what's, what's changed. Yeah, I, I think all of those, I would agree. There's been evolution in uh, a lot of things, especially for those of us that have been in for a long time. You, you know, there was a time where security wasn't very cool. This is, this is a great time to be in our industry, but I, I think one of the most simplistic yet important for me is just a security moving from a technical um, discipline or an underground discipline to a real enterprise board of directors type conversation. And so I, I hesitate to say a revenue generation model, but a business enabler uh, type of type of function in, in one of the bigger, larger evolutions that, that we've seen is really kind of in the digital transformation or in, in retail, that omni-channel move of everything and all of the data that is in, encompassed within a online transaction from how we secure uh, against bots, uh, automated, as well as, um, you know, kind of human uh, infiltration of a of a transaction to uh, the fraud on the back end and everything in between, including all of the business metrics that that we utilize to service customers or um, ensure that a transaction is is complete. So to me, uh, everything that you said around um, technology and the move to the cloud are are really. Uh, important and and I would say that yeah. that's definitely an evolution. But uh, to me, it's kind of that business enablement of taking what we do and then translating it to our board of directors, our audit committees. Yeah. So you know, maybe on kind of to double click on that. So obviously, in the retail industry, as you talked about this kind of shift to uh, digital enablement, omni-channel, basically touching customers in the store, in the online storefront, on their mobile device, kind of wherever, maybe on social. Um, so, you know, you care about that from a data personalization, you care about just to kind of know your customer, but at the same time, the data you collect on that customer is in many cases regulated, maybe by privacy regulation. It's obviously highly sensitive in terms of what they like to shop for and what they like to do. Um, so how do you find that balance in terms of kind of enabling, right? Collecting the, the data that your, your business needs in terms of merchandising and other things they they want to do in personalization 
while at the same time preserving transparency for the consumer, um, you know, satisfying kind of the privacy regulations that are kind of popping up even in the US. Um, uh, and then just making sure the data doesn't, doesn't get pilfered by some bad person. Yeah, it's a, um, you know, I, I think at its core, there are different security programs. And, and so there are compliance programs, there are privacy programs, there are security programs uh, that have the privacy and components, uh, privacy and compliance components built in. And, and so I, depending on that program, that organization, it, it really does matter, right? And so as, as we move through GDPR, as we move through CCPA and come upon uh, CPRA, right? And some of the privacy requirements, um, Colorado, Utah, Virginia, closer to home, uh, Michigan, Ohio, and Pennsylvania are already in committee, right? We should assume that all 50 are gonna have some level um, of, of privacy, but you have to have that, you have to have consent, you have to protect the um, consumer's right to choose, but security is inherently, um, it, it is inherently what customers should expect. And so data at rest, data in transit, data loss protection, um, continuous discovery of where that data may be or how it got there within an organization, and then helping in that data lifecycle management or that customer lifecycle management specific for US is really important. And, and there needs to be a plan, uh, not just in the, the retail space, but every business has customers of, of some sort, right? So um, yeah. it's challenging, but it, it needs to be intentional. Okay. Um, you know, one of the things that I've kind of observed, and I'm sure you kind of live, uh, during COVID, there's been this kind of um, more accelerated march to the cloud, right? It's a, you know, it's a way to, to minimize or reduce your costs, so you don't have to maintain data centers, you know, all the reasons. How does that impact everything you just talked about in terms of, in terms of data security, in terms of data privacy? How does that change the game for you? Uh, specifically, uh, the move to the cloud? Yeah. Y yeah, I, I think it, it is... Um, you know, the, the move to the cloud is interesting depending on where the organizational expertise or the organizational comfortability lies. I, I have full trust in large vendors out there. I used to work for a couple of them. And, and so the who handles that security, who handles that protection, who is um, understanding and owning the concepts of an incident response or a uh, reaction of some sort. I, I really think that a lot of times when um, relationships go south or there's a miss of some sort, a, a lot of it comes back to the communication of expectation setting. And, and so security programs who have a nice mix of vendor understanding and uh, managed service understanding and their minds and execution wrapped around configuration or misconfigure man misconfiguration management is uh, those organizations tend to have fruitful relationships with their with their vendors not always but generally speaking so we, we welcome it, and uh, I have a number of individuals on my teams who work really well with, with our vendors, and I, I think it really comes down to running those rabbit trails of use cases and scenarios around incident response and tabletop and the expectations of our team internally versus our, our managed partner or, or cloud provider. Got it. Um, you know, coming back to kind of something you talked about a little bit earlier in terms of um, the particular kind of vagaries of these new privacy regulations, you talked about, uh, you know, states very near and dear to you, like Michigan, and Ohio, kind of in committee, um, obviously California coming online with the phase two of their privacy regulation. Um, what do you think is particular in terms of data privacy and data uh, protection 
to the retail industry for you know would be retailers out there that are kind of selling selling their housewares on Shopify. Um, what do they need to know, both from an employee standpoint and also from kind of a customer standpoint? Yeah, I, I think it's the um, the ease of e-commerce these days is very attractive, and and so and that's great for business. It's great for revenue generation. Um, there is a balance to uh, rigor, and uh, whether it's on the legal side or whether it's on the security side of data, and especially data as an asset, and that that mindset is. Um, opens up a lot of cans of worms, but organizations that understand that mentality of data as an asset at, at first and foremost, at its simplistic, most basic concept is data as an asset is just that and people want it, other people want it, other organizations want it, organized crime wants it. So uh, obviously for me, um, being in this business, that is our, our table stakes with some of the conversations on some of our business decisions of what platforms we use and uh, who's, who's gonna control uh, some of that data or some of those uh, customers' experiences as they come onto our platform or our uh, partners' platforms. Um, I, I think one of the things you would, you would mention there that the landscape of the partner community and whether it's considered kind of third party uh, risk, fourth party risk, fifth party risk, um, some of the organizations that uh, have those e-com platforms do a really good job of their partner community and some do, uh, um, they're challenged in making sure that their partner communities are up to speed on what needs to be done uh, executing appropriately um, or managing their customer identities or, or managing their customer privacy um, preferences well. Yeah. So I, yeah. I, think that's a, I think that's a big consideration for, for not just uh, retailers, but for any businesses looking to, to head out there. Okay, understood. Um, you know, uh, the board, board wants to know from you, uh, what do the next three years look like? What's uh, what do they need to be knowledge about? So now you're sort of talking to somebody with with a, with a kind of a small uh, storefront. You're talking to a board member that maybe is not a security expert. What's happening? What does the future look like around uh, security? Yeah, I, I think uh, I think from a security standpoint, organizations continue to mature in their uh, data handling, uh, their data decisioning. Um, more data doesn't always mean better. Uh, especially when uh, data breaches are hitting home to shareholders uh, in reputation, in fines, productivity to the organization, competitive uh, go-to-market, depending on what industry you're you're in. Um, on the risk, on the risk front, I think continue, businesses continue to mature in their risk quantification, their consistency in those calculations. Ultimate, ultimately yielding uh, better business decisions, more consistent business decisions. So uh, I, I like having the conversations at the audit committee and the board uh, level because it, it's, it's a great amalgamation of the business discussions with the landscape and the security discussions. So. Yeah, you know, I think, you know, one of the big takeaways for me kind of from this conversation is just you know, kind of shifting away security is a pure kind of cost center and a pure kind of like cyber. We don't want bad things to happen. We want lower cost insurance, but really as an enabler, right? I think with the right security and privacy controls, you could do more with your data. And yeah. certainly the collection of data is not going to be reduced. And so uh, I think those are fantastic points. And I think we've learned a little bit about how to talk to a consumer if you're building a small storefront. Um, and we similarly learned how to talk to a board member, which is always, always helpful. Uh, even advice that I, I, I could take away. Um, Mark, this was fantastic. I really appreciate um, uh, you coming on. I think, you know, it's always great to hear from some, you know, basically this iconic um, retailer that was certainly in all the malls that I ever traveled to uh, growing up. So, so thank you very much. It's been uh, educational. Uh, and thank you to our audience. And I'd like uh, to remind all of you 
Um, once you've listened to this podcast, to please uh, leave comments um, and subscribe. So, uh, Mark, again, thank you very much for coming on. Thanks, Dimitri, for having me. Thank you.